Oh, hello there. And welcome to CCP Mission Control. Man has always dreamed to float among the stars in the everlasting, ever-growing cosmos. In 1997, CCP was formed to fulfill that dream. Some of you have asked what CCP stands for, and I think it's appropriate that we reveal that now. CCP stands for the Classified Cosmonaut Project. A great man once said, if you want to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first create the universe. And so we did. We created the EVE universe. And now, after 15 years of continuous work on this universe, countless hours of simulations, and some failed experiments, we are finally ready to take our first actual steps into space. Keeping the Cosmonaut Project classified has required us to implement layer upon layer of deception. Things may not be always what they appear to be. It has taken us many years to fund and build out this advanced facility. And throughout these years, we've assembled a crack team of scientists driven by a seemingly limitless ambition to fulfill our vision. Geniuses like Steve Manekeller and the volunteer Svenny Kerroy. I'm very proud of the team that we have assembled here, mainly consisting of CCP workers who do this on a pure volunteer basis and out of sheer enthusiasm. It's astounding what we've achieved so far. Building this complex machine this craft contains over more than 6 million elements, and if only one of them fails, everything will go kaput. Indeed. But we're on a mission of precision. Yes, you see, the air pressure in such a high altitude is so low that even if the tiniest crack appears on the surface of the craft, the blood of the occupant will start boiling immediately and his body will explode in 3 seconds. And if you calculate the re-entry vector wrong, mm -hmm. he will get burned like a bratwurst or squished like a schnitzel. Mm -hmm. But we have one problem. Even so, Svenny is a very small person. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can squeeze him inside the craft. Ah, yes, Steve. Imagination will often carry us to worlds that never were. But without it, we go nowhere. We will find a solution. We will find a solution yet. Our space program has been underway for a very long time. We have though more recently started a new and exciting phase of this program. And here to talk about that, I have Ben. Yes, we've, we've just started a very interesting phase of the program, which is the physical training. So uh, this guy there has been spinning non-stop for a week now. And uh, the very first phase, of course, to, uh, to start the training was to recruit a cosmonaut. Mm -hmm. We couldn't find the, the perfect candidate in terms of size and shape. Mm -hmm. uh, but we believe that with proper training, mm -hmm. we can give him the stamina, mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. and the strength mm -hmm. that he will need to face the Oh yes, the, the conditions yeah. in space. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are very interesting and miraculous and difficult conditions. But, uh, which makes me wonder, are we then just going to launch him into space? No, 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 no. We're going to start with a, a test flight, if you want, which will be a, of a much more manageable scale and scope. Mm -hmm. And for that part of the program, we have uh, hired already another cosmonaut, actually. Would you then perhaps say, as has been said before, that uh, the universe isn't really required to be in perfect harmony with human ambition. Yeah, that and we figured out that the hamster is much cheaper of course. Certainly. Mm -hmm. And here we are now at the hamster training facility. The hamster is surprisingly similar 
uh, to our human cosmonaut in behavior and structure. And only slight modification to my training program will give us pretty much the same results. Mm. Marvelous. Simply marvelous to uh, contemplate uh, the profound effects that this small creature is about to have on the history of our mankind. I've been extremely pleased with the results of uh, my molding techniques. Yes, yes, totally. And um, the size of its brain is, of course, significantly smaller mm -hmm. than one of a full-size human brain. Mm -hmm. But it's not about the size, it's how you use it. Ah. Indeed, indeed. And a lot of data is available when it comes to uh, testing and training of human beings for mm. high acceleration. Mm. But of course, for hamsters, the availability of public data is, should we say, limited. Mm. So, we've built our own centrifugeuse of proper scale, of course, mm. in order to train and test the hamster in high G situations. We've left nothing to chance. The centrifuge is designed to simulate the high levels of acceleration that the cosmonaut will experience during the mission. G-forces induced by this equipment will move blood away from the brain. This will first result in a loss of color vision, then tunnel vision, and finally no vision. Hamsters, by their nature, have no color vision and actually just terrible eyesight. So much of this should feel familiar. But, but Dr. Ben, is it safe? <clears throat> perfectly safe. Nothing is perfectly safe. Only hippies believe in such nonsense. Progress without risk is impossible. Dr. Ben will now demonstrate how high G testing and training is performed with this centrifuge.